There are a lot of weird ways to play Fallout New Vegas. You could restrict yourself to the worst weapon in the entire game, put no points into the relevant special stats or skills, and play through New Vegas on the hardest difficulty without healing. Or you could do something even more ridiculous. Can you beat Fallout New Vegas as a necromancer? No, of course you can't. Don't be stupid, that's a dumb idea. I feel comfortable saying that because of how incredible the original idea was. See, what I was gonna do was use a mod that let me have both an infinite number of companions and the ability to make anyone a companion. The mod entitled JIP Companions Command and Control seemed to fit the bill with its option for so-called unlimited companions, but it actually caps out at 16 which is countless orders of magnitude lower than what I needed. The plan was to make Easy Pete my companion, then every time he died, I'd spawn in two more to take his place. When they died, four would replace them, then eight, then sixteen, then thirty-two, until hopefully I had more than one thousand Easy Pete's in the greatest army ever conceived. Unfortunately, it was not meant to be, but I liked the idea so much that I dug its lifeless corpse out of the dumpster I left it in and mangled it around inside my head box until something usable grew out of it. Then I got it. I play as a necromancer, one of those dark magic guys that can bring people back from the dead. It'd be like that companion only video, except my only companions will be corpses. Where the necromancer part comes in is that I use the resurrect command on any dead creature make it my companion, and when it dies, it's gone for good. This probably isn't the best concept for a can you beat video, but it's what I came up with on short notice. The Dead Space playthrough I finished earlier this week turned out to be far more mentally exhausting to write a script for than I anticipated, most likely due to how linear that game is. Anyway, my special stats were aimed at increasing the nerve of my companions, which is based on your charisma being able to take damage, and getting special points. Despite the points I put into Charisma, I was not going to rely on speech to complete the game. My soulless puppets would carry me to the finish line. My first stop outside of Doc Mitchell's house, after selling my trash and noticing that a big corner can be a possible companion, was the road leading to Sloan. There's a couple dead guys out by an RV that God left there just for me. Thanks Todd, you're the best. It's Christmas in July in the Mitten Squad household. Believe it or not, there were actually three lies in that sentence. A powder ganger killed his brother, I brought a caravan guard back from the dead, played around with the menu system. It's kind of intimidating at first, but once you get used to it, it's not so bad. Also, I set the difficulty to very hard to make up for the fact that I could have up to 16 companions at once. Shoot the barrels, interrupt an argument, negotiate with the people who don't know they're secretly my hostages, and let the battle for good springs begin. I left my powder ganger at Gene Sky Diving because, at this point in the playthrough, I wasn't sure if the factions a companion is a part of would have any impact on how I interact with other factions. Like if I had a legion companion, would an NCR trooper attack me on sight? No, that's another stupid question. They don't without the mod, why would they do it with it? The Good Springs and Promptu Militia successfully fought off the Powder Gangers. Cheyenne died, which I considered to be a sign from a higher power. I reanimated my corpses, felt powerful as all f with these four by my side, and pressed towards Prim. Stealing from some convicts and their eventual demise added more numbers to my ranks. Soon enough, I had a conga line of dynamite wielding maniacs trailing behind me. I ditched the Prim plan and decided to make my powder gangers fight against those in the prison. We're skipping the nuclear winter movie and going straight into civil war. Things got a little out of hand, just like the dynamite when explosions started erupting from the distraught flooring tiles crying out for help inside the prison. Eddie and his boys put up a hell of a fight. It took longer than I expected to conclude. I wasn't sure if that was because of the difficulty or because of the power difference between named NPCs and unnamed NPCs. Not much long after this, I swapped over to hardcore mode solely to let companions die after they die. In the beginning, I was expunging their existence from this realm with a console command, but that got real annoying to do in the midst of battle. Scrambles, Eddie, and a guard joined my cause, as did a gecko hunter and more importantly, a rad roach. The NCR trooper just outside Prim 
eased the part of my worried mind still wondering about companions belonging to conflicting factions. My lovelies ravaged the jackal gang members inside the f*** you house. I noticed an issue with the resurrect command, where sometimes a dead man will return to the land of the living without clothes. Really makes you wonder what happens after you die. On the path towards Mojave Outpost, my gaggle of mercenaries destroyed a few rad scorpions with impressive swiftness. They would be fine additions to my collection. The only problem is, you gotta be careful when you bring them back. Their minds haven't synced with reality yet, and they're still living in the past, meaning they're immediately hostile. That goes away after covering their body in the green and melting their mind. And look at this. When you draw a weapon, your companions draw their weapons, but the little rad roach just flutters his wings. I love everything about this. It was at the foot of the hill I enabled hardcore mode. I bought ammo and beverage inside the outpost bar. It got a little crowded in there. Rad scorpions really have no concept of personal space. My personal army of undead engaged in an amazing fight to the death with the innocent family of ants on the road to Ivanpah Lake. The mommy died last. She got to watch it all. Then I performed CPR on the ants and recruited them to my cause. If you haven't been paying attention, I've now got three rad scorpions, two giant ants, a gecko, a stolen puppy, and a rad roach, all as my companions. This is the best mod ever. Well, almost. You can also make birds your companions, but they just fly away and don't do anything, which makes sense since they're not real anyway. I expected the gang members camped out in the ruins of the Nipton Road Stop to put up a good fight. I usually have a tough time with them. I guess with a dozen things attacking them at once, they never really stood a chance. I knew where to find a real challenge though. Vulpus and Cactus and his legion followers. I stuck my hands in their pockets instead of just ordering an immediate barrage of death to be launched their way. It was such a decisive victory that I went searching for ways within Project Nevada to make the game harder. But I didn't really find anything. All the settings would apply to both my companions and enemies. Seemed like it would only make fights longer, not so much harder. I had to dismiss a few things to make room for Vulpus. He was coming with me whether he wanted to or not. A big corner, with its dying breath, asked me to force life back into it to extend its eternal suffering. I happily obliged. We all stayed the night in a little cabin. Don't ask about the sleeping arrangements you don't want to know. I lost both the big corner and Cheyenne to a mountain climbing adventure. I didn't see how it happened, but I can only assume that they blindly followed me off a cliff and violently plummeted to their undoing. I tried to pickpocket Victor to make him angry. Didn't work. Things got a little cramped inside the mouth of Dinky the Dinosaur, and I was off to Repcon to deal with some ghouls. I temporarily had a glowing one as a companion because of how f***ing cool that is, but the radiation, especially in a hardcore playthrough, would have been much too large of a pain in my ass to be constantly worrying about. Inside the space exhibit building, my heart broke. A pair of feral ghouls ripped my little rad roach to shreds. That hurt. Hurt a lot, actually. It wasn't fair. He never did anything to anyone. He was too slow. As recompense for the misdeeds of their cousins, I had my friends lay waste to all the ghouls inside the chamber of Jason Bright. It was so great to watch all those skinless f**ks get what they deserved. Before leaving, I channeled my inner Moses and brought Jason back from the dead, alongside a few of his followers. See, I had me a plan. That plan failed when I couldn't put any of the party hats I found on my companions. Luckily, Plan B was almost as good. The Brotherhood of Steel would become victims of an underground home invasion by someone they accidentally let inside. And what could be more beautifully ironic than an army of the things they hate the most being the ones to send them into extinction. I had a few ghouls, but I needed more. I needed the super mutants atop Black Mountain, but curiosity got the better of me when a rare opportunity lifted its dress and presented itself to me. I had an army. When have I ever been more properly equipped to take on a baby deathclaw? Never. The baby got beaten to death, then resuscitated with one other that had been dead for god knows how long. I didn't take the third because I didn't want to be greedy, then realized that was stupid. After what I just went through in Skyrim, I deserved to be almighty, which was why a fully loaded deathclaw was robbed of its life. I had become unstoppable. If Tabitha could have seen what was coming for her, all of this unwillingly working together as a cohesive unit, she would have killed herself. You might be asking, is this overkill? Have I taken things too far? You ain't seen nothing yet. A second death claw left a permanent hole in my team, 
when it ripped one of my scorpions from me. Now the Nightkin and such, sitting atop the mountain, they were worthy of fighting my army. The Nightkin sniper was tremendously effective with its missile launcher, and I could do nothing to stop him. I noticed both Eddie and Bodyguard Guy looked pretty exhausted. It was clear they were tired of this life. I gave Eddie a party hat to cheer him up, gave the Coyote a missile launcher, had a mother of a time, navigating through the crowd I'd brought inside a building, watched as Tabitha died, brought her back, invited her to join me, found Hidden Valley, and remembered that I needed Veronica, as my lockpick skill wasn't high enough to pick the lock. She would be a tool, nothing more. She got me inside, I dismissed her, called on my comrades to follow me down into the bunker, and sh got crazy. Not in the way you're thinking, all these idiots blocked my path and wouldn't let me pass. The only way I got through them was by manipulating the fundamental elements of the universe by quick saving and quick loading. It happened a second time down in the real part of the bunker, which was a problem because the death claw was blocking everyone's way. A few got through. Paladin Ramos was granted permission to sit at the cool kids table, and everyone I'd come to know and love over the last few hours got torn apart by the Brotherhood of Steel. Had the death claw, super mutants, and Tabitha gotten through, Maybe they would have stood a chance, but Jason Bright, or the missile launcher I taped to a dog, were never meant to take on the bunker-dwelling freaks. After I backtracked to the bunker entrance, a few more paladins survived my onslaught for longer than they should have. I regretfully dismissed the giant ant, made the death claw sit in the naughty corner. It made horrendously graphic images of itself with the rad roach. I couldn't let that go unpunished. Got more of my squad, I hate using that word outside of my own name, inside the bunker, and a proper war broke out. It was much more entertaining to watch than it was the first time around. It didn't turn out any better though. I'd lost pretty much everyone by the time everyone but me had died. Tabitha's death probably hit me the hardest. Seeing something so pretty cut down in its prime is never easy. I died too. Despite having some of the toughest creatures in the wasteland watching my back, I could not successfully sack the Brotherhood of Steel bunker. Looking to make myself feel better, I reloaded a save, entered the Bison Steve Hotel, let everyone have some fun with the new toys they found inside. Chris Haversum was as worthless as ever, I only kept him around to torment him anyway. His constant fear provided me with moral support. From there, it was off to Boulder City to pay a visit to Jessup and the Great Cons. Private Pussy was offended when I threw a spear at the war memorial. The giant ant had him for lunch. I woke him up from the endless dream of nothing, watched as the Great Cons put up far more of a fight than I would have expected. The coyote fell before them. Jason, Bright, and Eddie dealt the final blow to Jessup in tandem, and Jessup came along with me on my way to the Strip to find Benny. Just outside of Boulder City, I used the command and control part of this mod to send the baby Deathclaw after Victor. That metallic cowboy f managed to evade the Deathclaw for a full minute. But I finally had the dream team assembled. We strolled towards the Strip like we owned the god planet. A Legion raiding party was sent after us. It was just a thrashing in every possible sense. The damage, everyone except for me took, was worth it. A legionary assassin was now along for the ride. The dream team had become a lucid dream team. It just keeps getting better and better. I lacked the caps required to buy my way onto the strip. Victor was gifted the eternal sleep by one of his brothers. Their time in hell was cut short when I snabbed one of the Securitrons back into my arms. Our first stop on the strip was Gamora, and it was everything I hoped it would be. Watching death claws and super mutants and giant ants and ghouls murder everyone in their way was glorious to witness. That said, the White Glove Massacre was pretty great too, mostly because it started off in a more well-lit area where I could see everything. Chauncey got tag-teamed by a ghoul and a death claw. I don't even know what happened to Margarine. I can only assume that Chris Haversum ate her. Then there was the Tops. The Tops was the WrestleMania of terrorist attacks committed by a wizard with an undead army of creatures against casino owners. Benny died well, certainly better than anyone in a checkered suit should have. With an invitation to discuss the future of the Strip from Ambassador Crocker, I entered the NCR Embassy thinking I was going to side with the NCR. A Yes Man ending seemed too easy for this playthrough. Had to go deal with the Kings, not what I had in mind. So my army killed everyone inside the building. No NCR for me. They killed the troopers outside too. No reason to let them live. Same goes for the nerds in the office. And if the NCR there are dead, it wouldn't be fair to leave any survivors at NCR outpost. I went against the grain 
and opted for killing Mr. House as well. It was the Legion who I would be siding with. The unicycle machines protecting Mr. House were politely escorted somewhere safe. I entered the control room, had Benny beat the real Mr. House to death, rambled my way out to Cottonwood Cove, met Little Caesars, was sent to the weather station, and learned the hard way that three is a crowd. It wasn't as bad as the Brotherhood bunker, but it was still annoying. The protectrons harassing me were destroyed while I dealt with the power generators, I made my escape, and I got my ass blasted by the ghost of Mr. House. The sentry bots escaped from their chambers and wreaked havoc on every single person I brought down there. Thankfully, my boys were enough to overpower all three sentry bots. The damage they'd caused to my team meant there were a few openings for newcomers. I brought the three of them along. The one that was slow in the head remained in the station after I left. I wasn't about to go back down there so I dismissed it, returned to Caesar, and made my way northeast to Nellis Air Force Base. I had George killed so I could drag him through the boomer bombardment while his mind fought every step of the way. But his body, under my control, wouldn't let him until his legs got blown off by one of the missiles striking the earth. And that's where I'd leave him, condemned to suffer for all of eternity in no man's land, stuck between life and death until his mind could take the constant pain no more and whatever sanity he had left faded away, leaving him in a state of delirium until the end of time. I died instead. The second time, oddly enough, I barely got hit by any shrapnel, and George was just fine too. To make up for that, after meeting Pearl and retrieving the army I'd left at the shack as to not get them all killed while I approached Nellis, I sent George to land the first strike that would spark a war between the boomers and Mitten Squad. He didn't f***ing die there either. Lady Luck had feelings for George it seemed, so I dismissed him. He went back to Jimmy's well. Not sure why he went there, but whatever. I got a Mr. Gutsy on my side. Dream Team 3.0 was assembled, featuring a Benny who really didn't want to be there. The remaining boomers were murdered. I got my legs blown off by the same blast that ended Pearl's life. Got healed up by Mitch, returned to Caesar, failed to deal with the white gloves, and had to go blow up the Brotherhood bunker. I knew I couldn't fit everyone down there to do what needed to be done. I momentarily stripped my team down to the bare essentials. Benny, the Sentry Bot twins, Tabitha, Ranger Ghost, and a Boomer Guard with a missile launcher and power armor. I didn't use them to lead a crusade against the Brotherhood. Instead, they would be my insurance policy. I would force them to take every bullet for me after I picked up all three passcodes off the Brotherhood Kingpins and activated the bunker's self-destruct sequence. And, amazingly, something worked out in my favor. I got the bunker to do the big die. Everyone on my side survived. Caesar had a headache, which I could fix, but it wouldn't be cheap. I mean that literally. The surgical tools were 1300 caps and I was 1200 caps short. I was going to kill the doctor and everyone inside the hospital, then just pick up the tools off her dead body. Turned out, that was unnecessary. Jessup had been hoarding all the weapons for himself. I took a few, sold them, got the tools, had the doctor and her friends killed anyway for the inconvenience, saved Caesar's life, and had a monster of a task to complete. Assassinating NCR President Kimball, my death clothes having none of that guy's shit. I was worried about this, mainly because I was supposed to remain undetected and inconspicuous while the president's bird landed, and being surrounded by, you know, all this would draw unwanted attention. But your companions don't matter when it comes to being detected. If your enemies can't see you, by the rules of peekaboo, they can't see your companions either. I got my death claw into position, sicked him on the president, and all out war began. At least, that's what you thought would happen. Death claw accidents are a common occurrence in the wasteland. Nobody batted an eye when the death claw ripped the president in half. They only cared when it was obvious that I was the one giving the orders. Then things went to the next level, just not for very long. It only took about a minute for everyone willing to fight back against their own death was no longer a threat. I said goodbye to Chris Haversum and the clinic guard I stole from that doctor who had the surgical tools. Got probably four or five NCR rangers to join the final team that would lead the assault on Hoover Dam. Returned to the fort. For some reason all hell broke loose and I had no earthly idea what caused it. Did I f*** up a command that stripped the rangers of their faction? The remove from all factions command can have disastrous consequences if applied to yourself. Did I accidentally apply that to myself some time ago? And how would I even figure out when I did it? No, I just forgot to take off my NCR armor I'd been given for the assassination. Caesar was pleased. I met the legate, 
I healed everyone on the Ultimate Dream Team version 4.0 that could be healed. The sentry bots couldn't. I used a console command to wait until morning just so the second battle of Hoover Dam would be visible, and the end began. Predictably, this didn't go as planned. You might have expected to see the death claws and the robots and everyone else ripping and tearing and shooting and smashing their way through all the NCR forces atop the dam. Well, that didn't happen. I couldn't even find the sentry bots, and there were what were most likely pathfinding issues, leading to nobody following me into battle the way they used to. Also, quite a few of them were crippled, which wasn't fixed by healing. For the first segment of the fight atop the dam, I absorbed all the punishment, reached the halfway point myself, healed everyone, was amazed that one of the giant ants was still alive after all this time, and the second half was much better. Everyone got their shit together. The sentry bots cared enough to show up, and it was a proper war. I even added two power armor clad NCR heavy troopers to my team before entering the power plant. The lighting in there sucked, but everyone did their part as best they could. Probably would have been smart on my part to insist that they use ranged weapons instead of melee weapons, but everything about me is a mistake, so it's fine. I had a handful of crashes just before confronting General Oliver, as well as several more right after the fight began. An old and familiar problem rose like a phoenix to f me to death right at the very end of the game. That problem from my new Vegas Companions only video was back. I still don't know exactly what the problem was. It seemed to be that Oliver doesn't immediately retreat back into his office. You'd normally fight through the best the NCR has to offer until you reach him. Then you kill him, everyone with him, and the legate shows up, and the game ends. But Oliver would simply not die. He was completely immune to all forms of damage. Even my powers as a god were not enough to kill him. Using the kill console command on him did nothing. He'd become too powerful. In the companion-only video, I went back in time, sided with Yes Man, and beat the game that way. Due to time constraints, and this being such a cluster f of an idea, and not even being a real challenge in the first place, I didn't do that. I successfully failed on purpose, and did not beat Fallout New Vegas as a necromancer. If you enjoyed the video or learned anything, leave a like. Leave a dislike if you didn't enjoy the video or didn't learn anything. Thanks to the Champion Tier supporters as well as other channel members for making videos like this one possible. Join the Mitten Squad Discord server through a link in the video description. Follow me on Twitter at Mitten Squad. My name is Paul of Mitten Squad. Have a day.